Well, hello, my name is Michael King, and I welcome you to Chester Baptist Church Bible Fellowship Lesson for October 15, 2023. Today, our lesson centers on where we should put our faith, either in God's who or in our do. What does it mean to place your faith or trust in something? When we speak of faith, we usually think of faith in a religion. People can also have faith in things, preoccupations, or ambitions. Many people feel that their worth and value is actually connected to what they can or can't do. Excelling in academics, athletics, creativity, community services, vocational or professional skills, or any other activity would seem to warrant individuals placing their faith in that thing. Well, it is okay to place our faith or trust in people and things with this understanding, this proviso, that we have to be sure and recognize they, they are fallible. On one hand, we can be confident that a person or thing will help us. And on the other hand, we realize that that person or thing has limitations. Our lesson writer today, the Apostle Paul, gives us a more appropriate God perspective in where we should put our faith and trust. Our scripture verses are found in Galatians 2, 11 through 21, and our first verses read as follows. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles, because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas, in front of them all, you are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? Wow, what a question. Paul had learned that some people in the church in Antioch were telling the new Gentile believers, and this was in Galatia, that they had to be circumcised along with believing in Jesus to be truly saved. Furthermore, the apostle Peter, who had gone to Galatia to assist with the ministry, had uh, at first fellowshiped and eaten with the Gentile Christians, but he gradually withdrew from them when representatives from James's Jerusalem church arrived. Now, these folks were pretty much, this was before the conclave that they had to determine whether uh, Gentiles had to follow Jewish customs or the law as presented by Moses. Even Barnabas joined Peter and other Jewish Christians in the hypocrisy of shunning the Gentile Christians. A new precedent was being established. It was no longer enough to place your faith in God or in his who, Jesus, but now one needed to add what you do, that is, keeping the law, which said that every male baby must be circumcised at the age of eight months in order to have right standing with God. Well, when Paul witnessed how Peter and the others were betraying the teaching of Christ, he publicly rebuked them for behaving like Gentiles, but expecting the Gentiles to act like Jews. Looking at the remaining verses of our lesson, verses 15 through 21, we who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too 
have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. But if in seeking to be justified in Christ, we Jews find ourselves also among the sinners, doesn't that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I really would be a lawbreaker. For through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Wow, powerful verses. Believers are justified by their faith in Jesus alone, and not by works of the law or by any other personal accomplishments. Paul cautioned them that his instruction in no way gave them license to break God's laws, nor that Christ was encouraging his followers to sin. Instead, Christians have died to the law so that they might live for God. Paul then declared that he had metaphorically been crucified with Christ so that he no longer lived, but Christ lived in him. And Paul had life by faith. Indeed, it is through God's grace that believers are saved. Otherwise, Jesus' crucifixion was for naught. If right standing with God could be earned through obedience to laws and rules, then be no need for Jesus. The Judaizers in the New Testament church aim to blend the concepts of law and grace. Yet Paul emphasized that this joining is unattainable. Returning to the law equates to dismissing God's grace. Peter personally encountered God's grace in his salvation and preached about it in his ministry. However, when he distanced himself from the fellowship of Gentile Christians, he effectively rejected God's grace. Grace conveys the message that everyone is equal in their sinfulness, and all can find salvation through faith in Christ. In contrast, Peter's actions conveyed, there is a distinction. God's grace alone is insufficient. We also require adherence to the law, which is absolutely wrong. We need to eliminate our do, our works, our efforts, and rely solely and totally on God's who, Jesus. Please join me in prayer. Father, we come before you today and ask that you would help us to remember, place in our minds and in our hearts, the real joy of your grace in saving us, and that it is without merit that we receive this free gift from you. We, we cannot earn it. We cannot purchase it. We cannot find it in any way except to receive it. Father, help us to remember that our own efforts are as filthy rags to you, and that we are your children because you have reached down and saved us. Thank you for that, Father. We thank you for all of your, all of your blessings, all of your gifts that you give us in your Son, Jesus, and in our lives today. And we'll thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen.